If you've been watching television lately, chances are you've seen a white-haired Texas oil man promising he can save America from foreign oil by using wind power, solar energy, and domestic natural gas. That's T. Boone Pickens, and he's playing the role of pioneer and provocateur in a massive national campaign, warning of an energy crisis as dire as the current financial one. He says he has a solution, a plan that might sound unrealistic in the current economic climate, but one he hopes will be good for the country and good for Boone Pickens. Can I get a picture with you? Sure can. Who's taking it? At 80 years old, T. Boone Pickens acts like a man in the prime of his life. And there is no better place to see that than Oklahoma State University. You don't even know who you're having your picture made with, do you? Thank you, Boone! He's given his alma mater about $350 million, turned around their football team, and built a new stadium. Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> and that's made him a very big man on campus. So tell me who this is. <laughs> and tell me what he means. <laughs> But can this billionaire who means everything to them help break America's addiction to foreign oil? It seems to me that Boone Pickens is a guy that needs an idea and a challenge. He almost needs to be at war all the time. I know, they, they call them crusades. I mean, I've been accused, you're a crusader, Pickens. Right. I said, I don't start out that way, but I'll have to admit that sometimes it ends up kind of like a crusade. I'm T. Boone Pickens. Pickens is spending $58 million of his own money to promote his biggest crusade yet, and probably the biggest of its kind. He calls it the Pickens Plan. It's our crisis, and we can solve it. The essence of his plan is to reduce oil imports by 30% in 10 years and save the country hundreds of billions of dollars. Pickens is an oil man who believes the era of oil is over and that there's enough natural gas in this country to take its place in millions of cars and trucks. We own it, and it's abundant, and it's cheap. It's cheaper than the oil. And whatever we spend here for energy at home creates jobs, taxes, and the economy goes. So this will stimulate the economy in your judgment? Oh, yeah, we can, we can do so much here at home with the money here instead of letting it go out of the country. The Pickens plan, which could be overly ambitious in this financial crisis, calls for a conversion from oil products to natural gas in vehicles. First, by phasing in two million new heavy trucks, roughly the entire fleet of big rigs that move goods around the country. Trucks account for about a quarter of the amount of oil we import every year. If you don't buy into natural gas, you're not buying into the Pickens plan as a bridge to the future. That's right. Anybody, whether it's Sarah Palin or George Bush or John McCain, who thinks you can drill you out of the problem is? You don't have a chance. There's no way. We're importing 12 million barrels of oil a day. Okay, let's just say that we, we were going to replace 12 million barrels by drilling in America. We would be bigger than Saudi Arabia. And we are stretched for everything. I mean, we are a marginal producer. In order for his plan to work, Pickens proposes replacing the natural gas that's now used to generate 22% of the nation's electricity with a new source of power, wind power, created by thousands of wind farms that would need to be built. How do you know the utilities are going to take wind power as a substitute for natural gas? That may be a mandate. And so that's a critical point. You may have to have the government demand this happen. Right. Suppose it doesn't work. Suppose the Pickens plan doesn't happen. What happens to the country? Oh, well, we're, it, the plan then is foreign oil. You're totally at the mercy of foreign oil. But it's not at all simple. It would be a massive undertaking, requiring more than $500 billion of private investment in wind power and $150 billion in government subsidies. And Pickens wants the next president and Congress to remake the nation's electrical grid by declaring emergency eminent domain to run new transmission lines through private land across the country. Is this called a wind corridor? Yeah, that's the wind corridor. That kind of urgent action hasn't been taken since President Eisenhower 
commissioned the interstate highways to move military equipment during the Cold War. But this needs to be identified as emergency, is what it is. It's a crisis. We're at war with no guns in this one. Yeah. And Pickens is right where he wants to be when he makes a deal, on the front lines and poised to make a profit, which could happen if his plan takes off and the demand for wind power and natural gas eventually soars. The energy hedge fund he now runs, BP Capital, invests in natural gas securities. Hey, Marty, I'm home again. He's the founder and major shareholder in Clean Energy Fuels, the largest natural gas vehicle fueling company in the country. And Pickens has already spent $2 billion of what he hopes will be $10 billion to build an enormous wind farm. There's, there's plenty of wind. Here, the far edge of his 68,000-acre ranch in the Texas Panhandle. That's risky in and of itself, since wind power is still in its infancy and the financial markets are tight. $10 billion gets you how many turbines? $10 billion. Oh, I have about 2,500. Yeah. And that'll produce how much power? It, it would service a million three hundred thousand homes. Yeah. The, uh, so it's, it's big. It, it's, it would be the biggest wind farm in the world today. So what's the risk? Well, you, the, the risk is just like the risk we just experienced in the last 30 days. I mean, right. if the markets fell apart right. on you, yeah. I mean, you could be left holding the bag in that deal. And, you know, and you wouldn't be able to finish the project or something. That's the concern I have. What's the balance for you between I'm doing something for America, and I'm doing something for Boone. Oh, you know, no, no question. I'm, I'm rich enough. I mean, uh, let's don't talk about Boone, but I don't want to make Well, you mean don't talk about Boone. Well, Boone I, thinks I, about Boone. Well, let me tell you, I, I sure as hell don't want to lose, I'll tell you that. But getting rich for me again isn't that big a deal. And, you know, in the last five years, I've given away $700 million. And so I don't, I don't need any more money. My standard of living is about as good as it can get. Whatever the motive, Pickens knows he has to sell his plan to the public and to politicians. So he's been barnstorming the country in his $45 million private jet, preaching his gospel to packed town hall meeting. Before these, one of these people is picked for president, they've got to give us a plan. What are you doing? Crisscrossing four states in a day, speaking at breakfast, speaking at lunch, speaking in the evening meeting people all the time. Congressman Boone Pickens. Hi, Boone Pickens. It's like running for president. Yeah, we're running a campaign that's, that's, that's president level. A lifelong Republican, Pickens' candidate this election is his Pickens plan. And in August, we found him venturing into unfamiliar territory. Here we are, the Democratic, Democratic National Convention. Boone Pickens, longtime Republican. What are you doing here? I'm here, honestly, what I'm here for is I'm here for America. This is, my, my cause is, is a uh, bipartisan, nonpartisan cause. But it didn't take long for the new nonpartisan Boone Pickens to have a visibly uncomfortable encounter with his partisan past. See, how are you? Uh, so, how good, are good. good. Senator John Kerry, whose presidential campaign Pickens helped destroy four years ago, when he gave money for the infamous and widely criticized swift boat ads that attacked the senator's service in Vietnam and his later testimony before Congress. You spent $3 million funding an advertising campaign that in some people's mind was representative of dirty politics, smear politics, character assassination, all of that. At this stage, do you have any reservations? Do you have any? None. None. You'd do it over tomorrow. I, 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 what I knew then, I, I know that same thing now, and nothing has changed my mind. Surprisingly, that hasn't stopped some of the country's leading Democrats, like Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, from embracing him and his ideas. Here is a man who was my mortal enemy. He's my pal now. T. Boone Pickens grew up as an only child in Holdenville, Oklahoma, during the Great Depression. This is a house that you grew up in. Yeah. We didn't have to go to Oklahoma to see it. His childhood home was moved board by board right here to his Texas ranch. If you did this, it must have memories for you. Oh, yeah, it sure did. At age 12, Thomas Boone Pickens was a paper boy with the smallest route in town. 
He orchestrated his first merger and acquisition when he talked his boss into letting him take over four rival routes. I said, 28 is too small. I got to have more, more papers. And I finally got to 156. Yeah. Did you have any idea that you were headed for a business career at that time? No, I didn't. I, d I knew I was going to make some money sometime. <laughs> but I didn't and know how, how did that turn out? I didn't know how much I was going to make. <laughs> but it turned out pretty good. He made his first big money searching for oil and built Mesa Petroleum into one of the most successful independent oil and natural gas companies in the country. He attributes his success to being relentlessly competitive, which we saw when he took a skeet shooting on his ranch. Pickens took his hunt for oil to Wall Street in the 1980s as one of the original corporate raiders, earning hundreds of millions of dollars for himself and shareholders of the companies he tried to take over. Yeah, it's so frustrating. I, I hate it. He went through a long dry spell after that until he hit his 70s and came back bigger than ever with a new company and a new love. His fourth wife, a wealthy heiress named Madeline Paulson, They've created a sanctuary for themselves at their Texas ranch, but that hasn't insulated them from the current financial crisis. Pickens is getting battered by it. Clean energy down $1.35 to 1050. The steep drop in oil and gas prices since July has cut the value of Pickens hedge fund in half. Among those who have suffered is alma mater OSU, which has lost about $100 million off investments the school made with money Pickens had donated and then managed in his hedge fund. Overall, Pickens and BP Capital are down a staggering $2 billion. $2 billion. $2 billion, yeah. That's serious money. Serious money, no kidding. No kidding. We'll boom, get it back again. Yeah, I'll get it back. And there it is, the credo this oil man has lived by all his life. If one hole is dry, the next one is bound to be a gusher. And that's what he hopes his Pickens plan will become. You're 80 years old. I mean, in other words, it puts you in a race yeah, against sure. time. It absolutely does. You know? You're absolutely in a race against time. That's, wh that's where I am. I've got to make it happen fast. So you got a real sense of urgency. I damn right I do.